Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Augusta McDonald in for Diane Parker. Law enforcement continues focusing time and resources on stopping the fentanyl problem here in Montana, but dealers are still selling. The deadly drug is cheap to make, sending profit margins ridiculously high. This morning, MTN's Casey Conlin dives deeper into the economics of this epidemic. Let's call this sugar fentanyl. This is about a kilo's worth, and a kilo can kill 500,000 people, half a million. It's because all it takes is a two milligram dose like this. A drug trafficker can produce this for $8,000, but can sell 500,000 of these for millions. That's why everyone's terrified. Fentanyl's the number one deadliest drug threat our nation has ever seen. And David Oleski has seen a lot. A 23-year DEA veteran, he's worked in many of the world's drug manufacturing epicenters. But America's current fentanyl crisis is much more personal. My daughter, uh, Mary Kate, passed away when she was 22 um, of a fentanyl overdose. Carol Keenan shared her daughter's story at last week's DEA Family Summit. Mary Kate passed away eight years ago, before most had ever heard of fentanyl. There were just four fentanyl overdose deaths in all of Montana in 2017. Last year, there were 80. Here's why. Billings is at the center of two trafficking corridors, one coming from eastern Washington along Interstate 90, the other coming straight up I-25 from Denver. In those markets, fentanyl pills are everywhere. Where pills might sell, honestly, for less than a dollar, you can come into this state, and we are seeing pills sell for anywhere from 60 to $80. Agents reported that number from the Fort Peck Indian Reservation. The profit margins increase. Um, so for a trafficker, that is a market that they want to be in. Cesar Avila has worked in Billings for two years, and he's already seen a drastic change. You can certainly see the impacts that the, uh, the drugs that are coming in are having. One of the myths, I will say, is that people feel like ah, it's, not, it's not as bad. In reality, it is that bad, and it's getting worse. Stories like Mary Kate Keenan or this one from Avila are becoming more and more common. The boyfriend handed his girlfriend what he thought was just a regular um, uh, oxycodone pill it, to help her with her pain. She was complaining something was hurting. He's like, hey, being the good boyfriend, here you go, I, I, I have these. She took it, she overdosed, she died. He felt so bad, he committed suicide. I hope in five years it's better. I hope so, but um, yeah, it's hard to say. But someone has to be saying it. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. Yellowstone County authorities continue investigating the death of Cassie McCauley. The 28-year-old's body was found in early February by the railroad tracks near Laurel. Authorities believe she died in a hit-and-run accident. The family wants to hire a private investigator, telling us they're frustrated no charges have been filed. Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder says the case is now in the hands of the county attorney's office, who reported nothing new with the investigation. Monday's trial for a former Great Falls High School teacher charged with half a dozen counts of sexual abuse against children has been vacated. According to court documents, he's next scheduled to appear on May 1st for a status hearing. His case dates back to December 2021 when the principal alerted Great Falls police that Harning sent an inappropriate picture to a 17-year-old student. While Harning was speaking with police, his phone was seized by police. Harning chose not to make a statement and was released. After after getting information from the juvenile student, police got a search warrant for the phone and enlisted the help of the Montana Department of Justice's uh, Division of Criminal Investigation. Officials say the phone could not be searched until May of 2023 due to a backlog of cases. Great Falls Superintendent of Schools Tom Moore told MTN when they first, the case first came to light, they did take immediate action, placing Harning on administrative leave. He's now resigned and the school system turned all their information over to the State Office of Public Instruction, which suspended Harning's license in the summer of 2022. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Jason Stiff. Uh, we already have a change of foot with our weather around Montana and Wyoming, Idaho as well. A cold front is moving our direction. You can see it sweeping through parts of northwestern Montana already, and we're going to have more of that strong wind and a big cooling of our temperatures 
as well as more rain and snow moving our way. Right now, temperatures, especially in the eastern half, the state is still above average, but we're starting to cool down in far northwestern Montana, mainly 40s and lower 50s for areas around Great Falls and Cut Bank, also Haver, but more 60s ahead of that cold front in eastern Montana. But just about everyone is already cooling down. Out in front of that cold front, it's still warmer than it was yesterday at this time in Miles City. Bozeman also warmer for now, but that's going to be changing our seven day forecast coming up. Officials at the East Boulder Mine south of Big Timber are expecting test results back to determine if they can resume their work. It's been shut down for four days now after sensors carried by five employees showed elevated levels of mercury. Uh, test results today should help them determine whether the mercury came from an underground rock source or if the sensors were faulty. Mercury is a naturally occurring element and is occasionally detected in underground mines. East Boulder officials, though, say elevated levels have never been detected there before. Helena School elections ballots go out in one week and district leaders are asking voters to support local levies to help maintain their current programs. There are five separate proposed levies across the elementary and high school districts for safety and security improvements, technology upgrades and general elementary school operations. If all five pass, they would raise $13 million a year for the district and increase taxes by about $331 a year on a $300,000 home. Superintendent Rex Welts said in a message to families Friday that that the district can continue their current staffing and program levels if all the levies pass. But if they all fail, he said they would have to make, quote, sizable reductions. The election for school board trustee was canceled since three candidates filed for three open seats. In other districts, including East Helena Public Schools, they will also be asking voters to support levies in this election. And check out these impressive images sent in by Patrick Brown. He shot these pictures of a rock slide in Highlight Canyon. That's Monday morning. He says this is around mile marker four. You can see a boulder nearly the size of a person. The road there close to vehicles, but not to pedestrians or bicyclists. Uh, because of the rock fall, a Forest Service spokesperson says those who use the road are asked to be extra cautious right now. First People's Buffalo Jump State Park is celebrating the 25th anniversary of their visitor center. It opened in 1999 to give the community more to see and learn about the history of the park. The park also hosts several events throughout the year and in the summer, encouraging people to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Park Ranger Andy Keller explained what the visitor center has to offer. Visitor Center here, um, we do have an interpretive hall. It talks all about how the buffalo jump was used and how buffalo were important to all of the first peoples. Um, we also have our reading circle that talks about all the different tribes here in Montana. Um, we do have an archaeology display. Um, in the 1990s, Montana State University did an archaeological dig here, and their display is also here at the park. There are a variety of events coming up at the park. The next one is the Earth Day Sunset Hike taking place on April 22nd.